good to be here tonight. We're looking forward to this this evening. Looking forward to a good night. Night two of our renewal. I know the on the uh, on the screen on the on the computer you can't see this very well because it kind of blurs out a little bit. We are night two in our renewal project revival first meeting of the year. Uh, renewal is our theme for this particular meeting, and we're excited about what the Lord's going to do for us uh, throughout this week and uh, and what He's going to continue to do throughout this year. Amen. And again, like I said last night, guys, uh, no revival in the history of the church has ever happened uh, has ever happened outside of prayer. So we need to pray, 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 pray uh, that the Lord would move in our area, move in our churches, move throughout South Wales to make a mighty and wonderful difference in the house of God, but make a difference in the lives of believers today. And I am burdened in my heart that we would see a revival in the midst of these years, in the midst of these days. I'm burdened in my soul that we would see a wonderful and mighty difference. But guys, it's going to start with us. And uh, so I felt like we had, a good, we had a good kickoff last night, a good start last night. Uh, good spirit here, and, and, and you know, same uh, spirit here tonight. Looking forward to, to Brother Preston bringing the word. We're going to go to prayer first, and after that, um, Brother Preston's got a song that we're going to play here. And uh, for those that may be watching back in North Carolina, they may recognize this uh, this song, I think, this evening. So let's bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing upon our service this evening, and then uh, we'll play our, we'll get into our song. And remember, because of COVID restrictions, uh, we're not able to sing uh, here this evening. We want to play by the rules, amen. And uh, so, and then we'll carry on this evening. Let's just bow our heads tonight, if you will. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity to be here tonight. We thank you for the, the blessedness of what you've done for us, for who and what you are. And we ask you tonight, dear God, that you would again work in our hearts. Uh, Lord, we thank you for a wonderful evening last night. We thank you for just a blessed time together and, and a way to just kick off this meeting. But Lord, we're coming to you tonight. We're not looking for a tick box, Lord. We're not looking to uh, fulfill an obligation. Father, we're, we're looking for the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, we're praying that God would speak to us through his precious word. I pray that you use Brother Preston tonight in a mighty way uh, to bring the scriptures to our hearts and to our mind and bring conviction upon our souls. Uh, Lord, that we would exercise the gift that you've given each and every one of us of salvation and to proclaim the gospel uh, in our daily lives around those that we see uh, every day, every week, every month, Lord, we pray that you would use us. Lord, we want to lift up our villages in prayer. Uh, Lord, we pray specifically tonight for Abraham. We pray for Nancy Moyle. Uh, dear God, we pray in a mighty way between these two churches, Father, between Sarah and Hort, uh, Lord, that you would move up and throughout South Wales. We pray for Sarah and South tonight and, and look forward to uh, restrictions being lifted and you open up the door so that we may... Uh, reconvene uh, down in Cardiff, Lord. I just pray that you would continue to open up a pathway there. But we're just in, in our minds, we look at this triangle uh, between the valleys, Lord, and down the court, Cardiff. We look for a mighty work to be done in our area. We look for a revival in the midst of years, uh, Lord, to revive thy work in the midst of years, Father. We're looking tonight for a renewal in the Christian's life. Father, we can't expect to see people saved and born again. We can't expect to see families put back together. We can't expect to see those, Lord, that are, that are suffering and living in sin to do right. Uh, if we, Lord God, who name the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Father, if we will not be renewed in our spirit as well. So, Father, we pray tonight. We submit to you tonight. We humbly bow and ask you to see them. Uh, Father, to speak to us, dear God, through the preaching of your word tonight, Lord. And I pray you prepare our hearts as we play our opening song this evening. Dear God, I pray that you be with Brother Preston. Bless him, Lord, in a mighty way to bring the Holy Scriptures to us here tonight. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen and amen. We'll play our song now, and then you go ahead.
Tiffany and and uh, Sister Kristen as well. That I, I didn't I didn't notice the other one, but uh, they're from our home church there in King, North Carolina, at Calvary Baptist Church. And what a blessing! Uh, Brother Preston picked that song out. That was uh, I think it was appropriate for what we want to see as a revival meeting. Amen. And uh, when the Bible talks about the former and the latter rains, and the rains are a symbol of blessing, God's blessing upon his land. And uh, if there's anything we can ask for tonight, and of course we have plenty of physical rain here, so we're a blessed country, amen, but we're looking for a, a rain of the Holy Spirit of God down upon our lives and our hearts. Uh, let it start here uh, this evening. We'll pray that started last night. Let it start here in our church, amen. That's what we want to see. We want to see a difference tonight. So I'm going to turn over to Brother Preston tonight. Good like to, uh, glad to see him get here. Uh, pastor uh, Preston Cronin, he's the pastor of uh, Horde Baptist Church now, and we're thankful to have him here tonight. And so, brother, I'm going to disconnect this mic and leave it here on the pulpit for you, All right. and carry on. show up, I'm worried about what we can get from the Lord and what uh, what we can do in our lives. So let's not worry about that and just get right into what God wants for us tonight. Jonah chapter number three is what we're going to read from tonight. I'm going to read that entire chapter um, and uh, only only ten verses, but we're just going to read that full chapter. If you find a place, you would stand uh, just out of honor and reading of God's word tonight, Jonah chapter three. All right, Jonah chapter 3, verse number 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and set in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent, and turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not? And God saw their works, and they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Lord, thank you for letting us be here tonight. Thank you for each one that's came out. God, I pray that you'll just uh, use your word tonight. Speak through me. Help me to be quiet where I need to be quiet and say the things that I need to say. God, I, I know you gave us this, and I know what it's for tonight. And God, I pray that you'll help us open our hearts, as BJ said earlier, in our, in our minds, that we be receptive of what you want in our life tonight. And God, that we'll get a hold of some truth, get some instruction from you, Lord, so we can be renewed. Lord, I pray you touch those that are here and those that are watching uh, by, by the internet, Lord, tonight. God, that you'll get a hold of their hearts as well. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Now, I've heard preachers refer to what I just read here as, uh, that took place in Nineveh as being the greatest revival to ever be, to ever take place. 
uh, where the man of God came into town preaching the word of God. And there's so much preaching in Jonah, but I, when I, as I was reading that, uh, one thing that stuck out to me, this is not the message for tonight, but, but I like that uh, he said, uh, let me find it here again real quickly. And Jonah rose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. And now Nineveh was exceeding great three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he went and done, well, I'm sorry, at verse number two, Rise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. That's where I, I start, let me start reading again. He went and preached what God said to preach. He didn't come up with a message. I mentioned that Sunday, Brother Allen. You may remember this. I said, I don't ever want to just come up with a message. I don't want to just say, hey, I've got to preach, so let me go find something. There's always a word from God whenever his man stands before the people. I believe that there's always the right message. There's not a wrong place to preach, but I do believe there's always the right message for the right time. Man. But he went in and he preached what God said to preach. And a whole city turned to the Lord. Now, I don't want to discount what happened in them. It was a great move, move of God. And, and I praise God that the people of the city repented. They humbled themselves before the Lord. They turned to the Lord. And how I'd love to see the same results here today. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I'd get excited if, if we had hundreds just flocking to the church to get to, to, to hear the word of God and get born again. That'd be wonderful. How wonderful it would be to see this village turn to God. But the events that took place on the streets of Nineveh were not truly revival. What took place there was not really a revival. What do you mean by that? The word revival means this. Return. Recall or recovery to life from death. And funny enough, Brother Stagner, I, was look, I looked up in the old 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and Webster uses the example of revival, and he, he, he talks about bringing life back to someone, and he uses the example of a drowned person. Don't that fit well with what we're talking about here with Jonah? And he he's also says it's an awakening of men to their spiritual concerns. In Psalm 85, verse 6, the psalmist says, you know this verse well, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? The word used there uh, means to be restored to life or to health. It says to be quickened from sickness, discouragement, fitness, death. So simply, I said all that to say, what does revival mean? It says it means to bring life back, mm -hmm. to restore life back to something. And so in spiritual terms, Nineveh could not be revived because they hadn't lived yet. Mm, that's right. They had not spiritually lived yet. The day the message was preached and the day they humbled themselves before God and turned to Him, that was the day they became living. Now understand this. There, there was a great revival that took place here. Don't, don't get me wrong. There was a great revival that took place. But it took place in one man. Mm. One man. The message that was preached on the streets of Nineveh had so much power because revival took place in one man. Yeah. The renewal, the revival in the book of Jonah. Yes, it, there was some effects of it. We'll mention that in here in a little bit. That happened in Nineveh. But the revival took place in Jonah. Amen. And that is what needs to happen among the saved individuals today. And I don't want tonight, I don't want us looking around or thinking about who in here needs revival. I don't want us thinking about the church down the road, who, who needs revival, because we all do. Don't be concerned with the one sitting behind you and the one sitting in front of you, because you and I are the ones that need revival. We need it to take place in us. I need a great move of God to restore the fire in my heart. So many of us are going through the motions of church today, of service today, and we don't have that fire anymore. We can talk about the needs, we can talk about wanting to see God move, but ourselves, or should I go ahead and say just everybody here, not just us as individuals, but all of us, we need revival in us. Are we ready to allow Him to move within us? So let's look here in this book of Jonah here for just a few minutes. And what the man of God needed for revival. Now I'm still getting a little bit of introduction here. Jonah was no different than any other man. No different from you and I. He was made of flesh just like you and I. He was God's man, but he was still a human being. Mm -hmm. And he got into a place where he wanted to do things his way. Yeah. And if you want to interact with me a little bit tonight, how many of us have been there? Yeah, boy. Look in Jonah chapter number 1, verse number 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, 
and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarsus, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. God said, go to Nineveh. He spoke to his man, his preacher, his prophet. He said, go preach to Nineveh. And Jonah ignored the Lord. He ignored the word of God. And how often do we do the same thing? He knew he should go one way, but he chose another. Every one of us are guilty. Notice in verse 3, and one day I want to preach on this, this verse. He paid the fare thereof, and he went down into it to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. I just noticed that yesterday as I was reading, and I had to throw this in the notes here. Instead of going with God, he went with them. Mm -hmm. He went with a group of mariners, an ungodly crowd of people. He chose the world over God when he did that. One big problem that causes us to go backwards in our Christian life is that we look at the rest of the world too much and we start to compare our lives to theirs and we want to try to fit them into our life. And that's never going to work. It's going to put your fire out when you start going with them. Amen. There's a ton of preaching just right there, but we've got to move on. So often we choose comfort over commitment, don't we? Mm. We, we pick ourselves over our wonderful Savior and we lack in our life instead of laboring in our life. And hold out how dangerous that can be. Jonah's choice to ignore God, he endangered that worldly crowd, those mariners that he got on the ship with. These men were just doing their jobs. They allowed him to pay a fare to go with them, but his neglect of God put them in danger of losing their ship and losing their lives. Yeah. He endangered Nineveh. Now Nineveh didn't know it right now. They didn't know what was about to come to their land. They didn't know they were about to fight. Get, find total destruction from the Lord. They had no way of knowing that unless Jonah came and told them as God instructed him to do and his slacking on God put that whole city in danger mm. of destruction. He endangered himself. He could have been safe and secure on his way to Nineveh following the way of the Lord but he ignored God but God didn't ignore him. Yeah. He got off out in the middle of the sea thinking he was going to get as far away from God as he could and God showed right up and Jonah was out there at the mercy of the elements that God had control over. Chastisement was evident in God's man. And he was in danger. And when we die on God and we ignore him and we choose self and choose to follow the ways of this world, we endanger ourselves and we endanger everybody that we could be ministering to. Abiramon is in danger if life does not get restored in those that are saved here in this town. Yeah. Brother Alvin, Nancy Mole is, is in danger if we don't get a revival fire within us. We are there. I understand that the Lord does the saving, but we're their hope to get them to Christ. Yeah. And Jonah, God's man, needed a renewal if he was ever going to be effective. The people around Jonah may not have known it, but they needed him to be revived. Now I'm finally getting in the message here. What led to the revival within Jonah? If we have a title tonight, it would be that, the revival within. First of all, what led him to finding revival was that he recognized his position. Look in verse number 8 of chapter number 1. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and what people art thou? He said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. In the prior verses there, we find that the Lord sends this great wind into the sea. And the ship was being tossed. And likely, before long, it was going to be broken and it was going to sink. And the mariners began to cry out to their false gods. And they went and woke up Jonah and, and told him, hey, cry out to your God. And then they began to cast lots to see well, what's causing the storm. Nothing is working. They cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. And then they began to question him in the verses that I read. Hey, what's your occupation? Where are you from? Who are your people? And he told them. 
who he was. Mm -hmm. He told them who the, the God that he feared was. And then at some point there, we know that he told them uh, that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. And he said, the only way this is ever going to get any better is you get rid of me. I'm the problem. The seal called. He said, for I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Right here is where we see the process of revival beginning to take place in Jonah. What do you mean by that? He had to come to grips with the fact that he was the problem. He had to come to grips with the fact that he was the one that was messed up. He was not where he needed to be. He had to admit that before anything else could take place. Yeah. Proverbs 16, 18. You know this verse well. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. You know what happens in our lives too often? We're too prideful to admit that we're the problem. We want to point at everybody else. We will not recognize our position in this Christian life. That we're not where we need to be. We're not what we need to be. And all that is going to do is lead to failure. And lead us to sinning idle. Leads us to endangering ourselves and the people we can be ministering to. I read this verse just a moment ago. Psalm 85, verse 6. Will that not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? That statement is made there. Can you tell what he's saying there? They're admitting, hey, we're the problem. Will you revive us again? We're the problem. We want to rejoice again. Admitting they were not where they needed to be. Before you will ever find revival in yourself, you're going to have to admit that you need it. Man. Oh, it takes great humility in life uh, of a Christian to say, I'm wrong, Lord. I've failed you. I've slacked on you. To admit you're not the servant that you need to be, uh, uh, that you uh, even appear to be. We can put on a good front. I gave my testimony on Sunday morning, Brother Allen heard me say that I, I, I was lost and I, I, I went through the motions of being a Christian as good as a, a saved person could. We can portray anything, but we really know where we're at and we're going to have to admit it if we want to find the right. Take responsibility. It's easy for us to talk about, well, the churches are declining. I guess, can I stop for a time? I get tired of that, don't you, Brother Sagan? Mm -hmm. The churches are just falling away. Yeah. There's some churches still wanting to do something for God. We're still a group of saved individuals. We should want to do something. Amen. The reason it's dying out is we're letting it. Yeah. It's easy to point out the acceptance of sin in the world. Well, there's so much sin today. It's easy to place blame in multiple places of adversity. It's too hard now. We got COVID now as an excuse. It's become the, one of the biggest excuses in the last year for churches not to do anything and for people to sit at home. Yeah. Satan's fighting against us. That is true. I understand he's fighting against us. But let me tell you something. Don't give him more credit than he deserves yeah. for your failure yeah. and my failure, for our lack of devotion in our life of God. It's not all his fault. He doesn't make our choices for us. But what about us taking a moment to just examine ourselves? And see if some of the responsibility is on us. That lack of desire, that lack of commitment, determination to serve God, is it us? I thought about this as I was looking over this this past week. Some people cite a document, and you, you were in the medical field, you, you know about this, stating that if something happens to them and they die, they cite a document saying do not resuscitate. That means if they die, they don't want anyone resuscitating them. They want to just stay dead. Yep. And I'm afraid that many Christians have spiritually signed a document yep. saying, do not resuscitate. Yeah, that's good, brother. They're happy with mediocre. They're ha they'd rather fall away and die out spiritually than admit they need help. They would, uh, to admit they've slipped away from God's presence. This meeting's focused on renewal, on revival, and we all claim we want it in our lives, but before you're ever going to move towards it, being revived, you've got to recognize your position of failure, your position of slacking on God and admit you need it. Amen. I know that hurts. Failure sounds harsh. It hurts me. Whenever I go back and look at my life and I see that I've been nothing but a failure. But if we're ever going to get revived, we've got to get over our pride, confess to ourselves that we are not what we should be. And we need life restored. And that's what happened to Jonah here. He recognized his position. And then after that, he relinquished himself to prayer. Yeah. In chapter number two, we can read the whole chapter. We won't do that for a second time tonight. But we read of the communication between Jonah and God through prayer. Look at verse number one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. He was thrown overboard. 
A great fish was prepared to swallow him. Now, just a little side note here. Some people say, well, what kind of fish was this? Well, let Scripture answer that for you. Christ said this, for as Jonas was three days and the, three nights in the whale's belly, yep. so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. If Jesus says it's a whale, this is free tonight, I just, I'm going to believe it was a whale. So Jonah, he's swallowed by this whale. And, and we know, we got time to go into this, but Jonah died out physically. As we look at those words of Christ, as he's talking about referring himself back to Jonah, you can see that he died out physically. But what I want to look at tonight is his, because uh, uh, since we're looking at the revival of Jonah, I want to look and stress the importance of his dying out to self while he was there, while he was going through this event that's hard for us to understand. He began to cry out to God while he was there. Now that he admitted where he stood, and now that he had given himself over to the Lord, he was at a place where he could talk to God. Remember, he was ignoring him before. And he began to cry out to God, and the Lord heard him. Verse number 4, he said, Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. What was he doing? He was repenting of his wrongs. He was repenting of ignoring God. He was repenting of being spiked on the Lord. And now he was telling God, I'm ready to get back into your will. Lord, I'm looking unto you. I'm telling you, Lord, I'm ready now. I want you to move in me again. I'm ready to go forward. I'm looking to you and you only. He begins to describe as he's praying that horrible place he's in. He was useless in the state that he was in. He was unable to help anyone or preach to anyone from the belly of hell as he described it. He had to get out of his current state before he could be of use. He was miserable there. The floods came passing. The weeds wrapped about his head. No child of God is ever happy when you're not alive in him. And you're never useful when you're not alive in him. When you're not where you should be. He says his soul fainted within when he, and then he remembered the Lord. In his prayer, he admitted, I need you to move my life, God. He said, yes, in verse number 6, yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Verse 9, salvation is of the Lord. I stress those two verses because he is, he, he is stressing the point there, God, you are the only one that can bring revival to me. You're the only one that can get me back to where I need to be. Yeah. He knew he needed life again, and it took him surrendering over the Lord, begging God, allowing God to manifest himself in Jonah's life again. And he knew that it was impossible for him to do by himself. Brother Sagan mentioned that last night. It's impossible for us to create revival. Hey, I can run the aisles and scream with the best of them, but that's not revival. Revival takes place in here, and only God can do that. If you and I are going to be revived within, we're going to have to relinquish ourselves over to prayer. We've been doing it every Friday for a long time now. But I want to give you one verse here that Lord just wanted me to mention this verse as far as we're relinquishing our separate prayer. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you may be saying, hold on a minute now, are you saying I'm living in sin? I'm not out doing wrong. Jonah was not outward living in a life of sin here. He wasn't out partying or doing anything like that. He just ignored God. But wouldn't you agree with me that him ignoring God was sin? Wouldn't you agree with me that him not doing what God told him to do was sin? James says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Jonah had to admit he was wrong. And when he prayed, you can see he was repenting. He admitted he was wrong. And one of our barriers for revival is for us to humble ourselves before God in prayer and simply ask him, God, forgive me. Lord, I haven't done what I needed to do. I haven't been where I needed to be. God, forgive me. Jonah knew the good thing, the right thing to do was to get busy for God, to make amends with him. Man. And you and I know what a good thing is, the right thing to do. And it's not to quit and sit idle. It's to get up and move to God and cry out to him to renew us. Yeah. And then go do what he says. Some say he hadn't told me to do anything. He don't have to speak audibly anymore. We have the word of God. And I, I don't want to get on this. This is another message for another time, but it fits here. Can I tell you, that's another thing I get tired of hearing people say. When they, they don't do anything because God hadn't moved in me. He 
doesn't have to. He's already told us in his word what to do. Why should he have to repeat himself? Brother Stagger, he tells us to be the light of the world. Amen. He says obey my commandments. He tells us to go sow the seed of the gospel. You don't have to be told again. He's already told us. Right. We just need that revival in us so we go and do what he's already said. Yes. But to get to that point, it's going to take relinquishing yourself over to prayer. Hmm. Rebuilding that relationship with God. Asking for his forgiveness. Seeking his face. Asking him to restore you, to revive you once again. This is my own speculation here. But I truly believe if Jonah had not relinquished himself to prayer in chapter 2, this book would only have been one chapter long if it would have even been written. Yeah. Jonah wanted to revive. He wanted another chance to do what God would have him to do. So he prayed. And if you want revival tonight, ask for it. Man. Is it that simple? 1 John 5, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Mm. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. There's no question in my mind that it is God's will for us to be moving forward. Everyone agree with that? It's no question that it is his will for us to be revived, on fire for him. So why don't we ask for it? That means he'll hear us. He'll incline his ear. He'll hear us. And if he hears us, you know that he can provide that restoration. Jonah prayed. In verse number two, or chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah from the dry land. Mm. What happened to Jonah? Last of the night, he was revived personally. Yeah. He died out of the cell. He left his pride and his will behind. He recognized his position. Admitted where he was. He relinquished himself over to prayer. Began to talk to God. Rekindled the relationship. Repented of his wrongdoings. Asked God for another chance. And then things changed in his life. God spoke to him the second time. Instructing him to go preach unto Nineveh. Before he ignored God. But not this time. Jonah was revived. And the Bible says this time. That he arose and went unto Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord. Jonah still didn't really want to do this, by the way. He didn't really want to, this specific command. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't really care about these people. This was a wicked city that seemed beyond repentance. It wasn't something he wanted to do. But after he recognized his position and he relinquished himself to prayer, that personal revival that took place moved him to want to please God. When revival happens personally unto you, your desire switch from self to unto him and the reason I mention that about Jonah not really not wanting to go to Nineveh is revival doesn't always mean you're going to get to go enjoy yourself doing what you want to do mm -hmm. Brother Stagner and I have talked a lot about this most of the time when God leads us into something it's the thing that we didn't want to do yeah. it doesn't mean you're going to get your way it doesn't mean everything's going to be easy and everybody's going to listen to everything you have to say but it means like John the Baptist said he must increase but I must decrease. That's what it is. That's what revival is. He is increasing in you. Amen. And when real personal revival takes place in our lives, what we need, to, what we're doing is we're committing to do our little part, and then God can do His big part. Amen. It's not about having things your way. It's not about everything being easy and being being smiles and happiness all the time. It is a joy in serving God, but sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. But it's about being committed to God's will and God's way. And revival has to happen in the personal life of the believer before it can ever have an effect anywhere else. When Jonah recognized his position and then called out unto the, to the Lord and the Almighty God, he admitted who had the power and he submitted unto that power. He went to Nineveh and he preached eight words. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I guess you wish I'd preached eight words tonight as well. But when he said those eight words, look what happened. Verse number five in chapter number three. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, and the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For the word of the king of Nineveh, I'm sorry, for the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and he covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. 
And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let, it, let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from the fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. The revival took place in Jonah. Man. He went and preached. He didn't, he didn't add anything. He didn't take anything away. He went and preached exactly what God said to preach. Eight words. God empowered his preaching. And the personal revival that took place in Jonah sparked a move of God and brought life into a wicked city full of sinners. Hmm. Not just one person, but on to the king and then to the whole city. The king, in a, in a sense, began to preach himself. He said, hey, we're going to do this thing. Go put sackcloth and ashes on and cry out mightily unto God. He got a hold of the king's heart. Yeah. True revival that took place in one little preacher boy he turned a whole town upside down. That's good. God used eight little words spoken by this man. The man that got revived. A man now that was able to be productive for the Lord. He was able to do something. And oh, if we just admit we need revival. If we give ourselves over to real prayer, asking God to restore us, move us, not worrying about anybody else's relationship, not worrying about anybody else's business, but our own, talk to God about us. Then maybe we can have a revival within that can spark a fire in us that can have an effect on those around us. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Brother Stagner was preaching on Sunday. And somebody heard it through the door. And then it got to the mayor. Then it got, got on up. And before long, the queen heard about it. And it turned the country upside down. Now, is that going to happen? I, I wish it would. It's what happened here. But it's going to take getting revival within us. Yes, sir. We pray for Abraham. We pray for Nancy Bowl. We pray for Tashwell and the Carter Ferry. And we need to pray for them. Don't get me wrong. But if we really want to have an impact in, that, in, in our areas, we need to cry out to God for me. Brother Allen, we need to cry out to God for Allen. Wendy needs to cry out to God for Wendy. And I need to cry out to God for me. Admit where I stand. Admit I need God to move in me. I thought about this today. I was, I was out working on our pulpit that I'm building there for the church. And I got out there this morning early and was doing some work. And I thought about my tools I was using there. Uh, a hammer laying on the shelf doesn't do me any good. You know what I have to do? I have to pick it up. And I give it the power to be useful. You were talking about the power that comes from God last night. I guess that's why it was fresh in my mind. I help that tool to do its job. It don't do anybody any good. And we are the tools that God uses in this world. We are useless when we just sit idle. Can I say even we're useless sitting on these pews if we're not doing anything? And unless we let God move into our life once again and provide the power that we need to go forward, we're never going to do anything. We're never going to touch the areas that he put us here to touch. The only way it's going to happen is we seek God, admit we need a revival, and find it in him. Yes. As we close it out, we're, we're focusing on this, this term renewal, revival. And I'd love to see sinners fill this place. Man, it'd been wonderful, Brother Stagner, if the doors open and 50 sinners came in tonight and they got under conviction and got born again. Man, I, I, I'd shout over that. Yeah. I'd get excited. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't let that be the guide for this meeting's success. Amen. Amen. Don't look around to see everyone else in attendance make changes in their lives. Right. Don't let that be your guide for success. Tonight, as we close, I want you to only focus on you. From the youngest to the oldest, worry about you. And take inventory of your life, who you are, where you are, what you are. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. Because you're never going to get anywhere until you just get honest with him. And relinquish yourself to prayer. Jonah recognized where he was, recognized his position. But nothing changed until chapter 2 when he started crying out to God. Renewal will take place between you and God and nowhere else. You can't do it on your own. 
There's not a self-help motivational book. There's not a speaker that's going to drive revival in you. I can't put revival in you. Brother B.J. Stagner can't put revival in you. It happens in renewing your relationship with God. Just like Jonah did. And to do so, you've got to communicate with him. Give yourself over and let him work in you. Then personal revival can take place. So many pray for the church to be revived. Again, I've, I've said this already, but I do want to see the church revived. But the church is made up of individuals. And it starts with us. I'm responsible for Preston Cronin. B.J. Stagner is responsible for B.J. Stagner. Riley Cronin is responsible for Riley Cronin. Amen. Do we want to see God move among the people of our community? If we do, it's going to start with us. Just like Nineveh would have fallen in destruction had Jonah not got revived. And if we want it to move in our community, it's going to start with us. Do we really want it? And as we close tonight, again, I want to stress the importance of worrying about yourself, nobody else. Examine yourself. Take some time to figure out where you are. If we come to these series of meetings and we leave the same way we come, Brother Stagner, we've not gained anything. Amen. It's been a waste of time. And I hate to say that because we're in church, but if you don't change something, it's been a waste. We've got to get something from this. And I'll tell you tonight, if here, at home, wherever it be, relinquish yourself over to the Lord and pray and get things right between you and Him. If you really want, a revival will be in. Lord, thank you for the good liberty tonight. I pray that I did what you wanted done. God, I pray you take your word about this man, Jonah, and you help it to ring out in our lives. Help us, God, to recognize where we're at, call out on you, want revival in you. Lord, if it'll spark in us, then something can happen in these towns and villages that we live in. God, I pray that you'll touch the remainder of the meeting. Be with Brother Stagner as he prepares for tomorrow. You fill him up and help him to preach like he's never preached before. Go with us as we leave this place and help us to examine ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. touched my heart, and I pray that it did yours. If you're listening out there tonight, I hope and pray that a difference was made. But I want you to imagine this evening, and we're moments away from dismissing this evening, and I uh, want you to come back tomorrow night, and um, just imagine what would or could happen in our communities if each one of us would have a revival in our own heart. Jonah's a, a, a tremendous, matter of fact, uh, I, I, I got a sermon that I wanted to preach uh, for tomorrow night. Um, I've had it since we, Preston and I talked to him about, about a month ago. But, but probably two months ago, I jotted a little outline down on the right side of here, and I thought he was going to preach that thing tonight. And praise God, he didn't even touch it. And I'm going to pray over what God would have me to do. But, but Jonah's a tremendous picture of what we can do what we can be. Uh, what, a, what a mighty message tonight for us. The difference in one man. You know, we again, I, I think we've got it mixed up in our worlds today when we say, when we look at revival and we equate revival to evangelization. And uh, Preston hit the nail on the head. Revival happened with one man. But look at the difference. The difference. When one man got revived. Now you imagine with me tonight. If each one of us. Got revived. Just like Jonah did. And we all were able to reach our own little Nineveh. Think about the people you talk to. Every single day. Little groups. Family members. Online. Video games. Whatever it may be. So just imagine with me tonight. The impact you can have in the workplace, that you can have in the village, if we just got revived. 
I mean, I hate, I hate to make it sound like it's that simple, brother, but it is, isn't it? Great message tonight. Praise God. Praise God for that. We needed it. I needed it. Um, my soul, man, I, I'm on fire. I, I, I enjoyed that, and I hope and pray that God spoke to your heart this evening. And whoever hears this, sees this, watches this out there in, you know, internet land, I hope God worked a mighty work in your life this evening through the preaching of that message. Now, we're coming back tomorrow night right here. Same time, 5 p.m. So those of us at Sarah, and I know we normally meet at 6 on Wednesday, uh, but we adjusted it to 5 because Thursday night at Horeb will be at 5 p.m. And uh, so we'll have a little discussion tomorrow night about um, traveling over to Nancy Moyle. So I'll, I'll save all that to tomorrow evening. And, uh, but guys, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, again, I trust that the Lord has richly and wonderfully blessed you. Be back tomorrow night at 5 p.m. for night number three of our renewal Project Revival, first meeting of the year. Amen. Praise God. Brother Preston, thank you for hitting the nail on the head this evening. I thank God for giving you what he uh, uh, what what he wanted you to preach. And I thank you for preaching that message. That was a blessing to my heart and trust that it was to everyone else. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight as we're dismissed in prayer. Father in heaven, again, we come to you and we do thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts for spending time with us this evening. Lord, I pray that that which we've heard tonight will not just stay and remain here within these four walls, but as we've heard so blessedly tonight how it was Jonah the one that was the recipient, Father, of the revival and the difference that was made in a, in a pagan, lost, vile, wretched city. Uh, Father, let us, let us see the same thing, Lord, in our lives. Uh, Father, I pray tonight that our, each one has heard this message. Uh, their hearts have been tender, Lord, that they've been convicted. That they would humbly bow and submit unto you, Lord be renewed in that spirit, be revived in our heart. Lord, I know, I know what you've touched me with this evening, and I thank you for it, dear God. And I pray that fire continue to, to, to be rekindled, that it will be a flaming fire, Lord, inside of our hearts. Dear God, please give us safe travel mercies tonight as we depart one another, whether we're walking or whether we're driving. Uh, Lord, I pray that you bring us back at the next appointed time. Bring us back tomorrow night. Bless us, dear God. Thank you so much for the, for the upward movement in this meeting, Father. We thank you most importantly for your presence this evening. In Jesus Christ's name we ask these things. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. You're welcome to, to remain in uh, fellowship a little bit if you want. Uh, just remember the, uh, the COVID rules and, and whatnot. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord.